Um, so, uh, thank you very much for giving up your lunch times. I don't know if you've had something to eat or whatever, but like massively appreciate it. Obviously, we've had like a real groundswell of support around this this movement, and yeah, it's just really, really super exciting. So, there are some women today who have uh, given up their time to come and kind of help out on the tables and give some input, etc. Um, it is a workshop. Uh, we have previously done um, panel sessions and heard some really great stories about things, but you know, people's kind of journeys and their careers and some of their challenges. But actually, we sort of the, the kind of catchphrase was to kind of move beyond the panel. Like I think we spent last year establishing that, okay, so this is an issue, um, but now what can we actually practically start to do about it? So we've got some things that we want to get to in the pipeline around kind of mentoring and different ways of supporting people. And hopefully we'll get some feedback from you guys in this session. Um, but it is going to be interactive. It's very discussion based. Hopefully we'll all get some inspiration from each other. So without further ado, I'm going to pass you over to the lady who started all of this, Sharon. Thank you. Well, welcome everyone. This is awesome. This is great. We're definitely going to get a picture of all the engagement here. I would say this is probably one of the larger groups of folks that have come and traveled so far up at escalators, stairs to get here for this topic. and. Nobody has lunch in front of them, so I promise we'll get you out before the lunch time is over. Um, what I'd like to talk to you about here is going beyond the panel, exactly what Kate Graham had discussed. Before we even get into that topic, we had a meetup yesterday, and one of the conversation points was celebrating and highlighting each other in the industry, those that support us and those that are allies. So Kate has no idea this is coming, but I have created the first Women in Learning Star Award. <laughs> So put that camera down, Kate. Um, you are now being awarded a Woman in Learning Star Award. Although it may have started overseas, this really ignited and went on fire with your involvement. So you pose over here. That's very sweet. Thank you. <laughs> amazing. So the, the, just the, the brilliant thing about all of this is that it's so collaborative. So, I mean, and I've been, I've been really busy last year, and like Ashby, Laurie, Sharon, like everyone's Crew. kind of help is just wicked. So, yeah, anyway. Okay. So, there's one other unexpected ally and support person that I need to mention, and that would be Nigel Ping. Nigel, I know, he's going to kill me. <laughs> um, but men are equally as important in this discussion and this initiative. Nigel, you've mentored me. You had Dr. Celine Mullins up on stage. You've pr profiled women in learning, and you do it heartlessly and with every energy, and you never ask for any appreciation. So, all right, let's pose over here. Get that up here. Okay, now we go on. But this is something that we will continue to do: is acknowledge, highlight and really focus on women in learning. You heard the Roar song, that's just the beginning. Here's some of the inspirational quotes, and you see a stat there that I'll mention briefly, but we are working to change this. The stats without the black highlights are the stats from 2015. Um, the numbers are two to three women come into this industry to every one man. When you get to senior leadership roles, SVP, CLO, those numbers completely flip. So starting in, oh, before 2013 at the Learning 2010, Learning 2011, Elliot Macy started this as a dialogue. We thought, great, we got the numbers in 2015. We started with scratching our way to the top. That was our first title, a little <laughs> scary. Um, strategies for empowerment, we really evolved and we thought, thumbs up, we really moved the needle. In 2018, we got the numbers and um, they got worse. So it doesn't mean we're doing anything wrong, and we'll talk about that. It just means we really need to look at this from a different paradigm. I think it was in this morning's session. They said the definition of stupidity, I think it's insanity, is doing the same thing over and over and expecting a different result. Well, that's why we said we are moving this off from the panel, although really effective and interesting. We're now putting it into your, your hands to be a part of the solution on moving the needle of gender diversity. So there's just an outline right here of the stats, and these slides will be online and available for you all. Taking us beyond the panel, we're going to be talking about some of these specific bullets, but we're also going to take the trends and discussions 
that we had yesterday in our meetup. So if you missed it, no problem. We have a number of the women leaders. Um, can you just stand for a moment, the gals that were there yesterday? We're going to reach out to these ladies to champion and to share in our workshop sessions, to jump into groups and start the dialogue in either some of the topics that they discussed yesterday or that are listed here in our bulleted list. So thank you, ladies, very much. Right here, I'm going to ask you for the first exercise. And you see there's Nigel. He's right in the corner. Um, one of the first discussion points here is just say to your neighbor why you're here. A part of this is networking, but let's just take a minute or two and just say what brought you into this room besides me scanning around and telling everyone to come, even in the restroom. I was, hey, you're going to the lady, the women in learning session. So uh, take a second and meet your neighbor and just explain why you're here. All right. I said it could have been Malaysia, could have grabbed my baby. All right. Everyone, obviously, you're all here for a lot of reasons, right? Just a quick shout out, because we're going to be talking about this. We're going to expand on this why you're here and what can be done. Um, any really interesting things that bubbled up in your conversations? Anyone on this side share any really amazing reasons why you're here? Simple reasons. Yes, John. We talked about um, how important it was to have a broader um, gender representation so that you get much broader uh, diversity of thought. Um, but then also, I think it's switched on. Oh, it is now. <laughs> um, so, yes, yeah, so having broader gender diversity so that you get more diversity of thought, but also actually then broadening that to not just be about women, but about diversity as a whole and through 
broader diversity as a whole, we'll get much more diverse thinking in the way we do learning. Perfect. And that came up yesterday as well. Um, but as women, we're going to try to protect the world. We still have to e equal those numbers out. So many times in the panels I've facilitated, men have been my ally and my sponsor and my mentor, as well as women. But really, the men have to pull us up, and we pull each other up to get there. Any other? Let me get the mic over so to you. We were uh, sorry. Yeah. We were also talking about uh, maybe in other in other fields, uh, technology and so on. Uh, this necessity was to was this need was uh, was. Uh, has, uh, has appeared before because yes. they were less people, less women in these fields. Exactly. In, this, in this field, there are many women, but they are all in the lowest position. So that's something that you cannot see because every, every time uh, a man comes to our department, they say, oh, I am the only man, the only man, and so on. But uh, And maybe then he's, he's put the in charge. <laughs> <laughs> so it's yes. something that it was not appearing at the first time, but now we are thinking about We're it. We're thinking about it, and that's huge. It's magnified in this industry. So when we push the needle, ladies and men, we will move that much further. So let's kind of keep continuing on with this topic by first looking at some highlights of why you think you might have forgotten why you're here, but let's just show it through video. So I apologize for the technology here, but I'm going to get us to some videos that were, for me, revealing when I saw them and I thought might be really helpful here. This was in reference to in the U.S. Battle of the Press Sexes. release. Oh, yes. It says here that you're offering the men's winner $12,000 and $1,500 to the women's. Those are the terms. The men's prize needs to be that high to attract the best players. We're trying to make this the most prestigious tournament in America. And paying the women less than ever makes it more prestigious. Uh, it's just simply a question of what we can afford. If people pay to see the men play. They're mm -hmm. the draw. They're eight times more of a draw? I'm sorry? You're offering the men's winner exactly eight times what you're offering the women's winner. Do we bring in an eighth of the crowd? I don't know percentages, but... Well, they sold the exact same amount of tickets to the women's final today as the men's. Isn't that right, Jack? Today, yeah, I suppose so. Same sales, same prize money makes sense to me. Oh, come on, be reasonable. I mean, there's no way that we could afford that. What's your argument, Jack? Well, for one thing, the men have families that they have to support. This is gets even better. In my family. Yeah, yeah. Look, the men are simply more exciting to watch. They are. They're faster. Facts. And they're stronger. Facts. And Facts. they're more competitive. Just a fact. It's not your fault. It's just biology. Yeah. That's not my We're, point. We're we sell the same it. amount of tickets. Yeah. So, um, as you can see, this was a movie that was just put out a couple of years ago. My two daughters sitting with me said, this is a joke. People really don't speak that way, do they, Mom? I didn't notice the language because I grew up during this time. So, really shocking. Let's just take another look here. Um, another one, this is really most recent and shocking. Bombshell is in reference to the U.S. Fox Network from 2016. Apologies for the French, but this is international. Okay, quiet on the set. Broadcast television is the most competitive industry on Earth. For a network to stay on 24 hours a day, you need something to hold an audience. We need you in a shorter dress. There's a reason for clear desks. Women are everywhere. We're letting them play golf and tennis now. HR's on the phone because you called me a skirt. Yeah, it's, yeah. I gotta read that manual again. Yeah. <laughs> the attitude off camera was even worse. You're a man hater. Learn to get along with the boys. You're sexy, but you're too much work. I have a whole list. Will other women come forward? I want to convince you that I belong on air, Mr. Ailes. I think I'd be freaking phenomenal on your network. I could pluck you out and move you to the front of the line. But I need to know that you're loyal. I need you to find a way to prove it. I'm the bad guy. So, you get the justification here without us. You know why Roger's got that door blocking his office. Let me just tell you, I personally 
was sent home in 1989-90 for wearing pants to work. Uh, uh, trousers. <laughs> trousers to work. <laughs> oh! <laughs> I had the French, but I forgot the language switch in English. Um, so <laughs> we'll go beyond this. Um, this is a real problem. And I, I was in broadcast media. I almost died when I saw this movie because I wasn't prepared what the storyline was. And I took my daughters to this as well. And they said, we will not put up with this. So this is the time to really be discussing. One last scenario that I'm just going to mention um, and not even really go through the video is um, it's interesting to note that right here, the US women's soccer team, this video was done by a gentleman called Matt Lauer. He was discussing the inequality of the, what the women in the US soccer team was getting paid after the 2000s. I think it was 2007 to 10. And he was fired for uh, sexual harassment. So quickly here, we won't go near through all of this, but just to give a flavor. Fires in non-competitive friendly matches, they're paid a base annual salary with potential bonuses for winning. According to the complaint, that breaks down to between $3,600 and about $5,000 for women per game. For men, it ranges from just over $6,000 to as much as $17,000. And if they make the World Cup roster, female players receive 44%. So, as you can see, they're not making enough money even now. And to think that the person reporting on it was actually part of a problem, too, a big problem. Uh, there's an Apple streaming show that actually references this character, I believe, on the morning show. So this is big. And to blame ourselves in L&D for, for going a little backwards, if you do sports, you usually go up, you hit a plateau, and you dip before you go up again. I think what happened in 2018 was our little dip before we escalate and really move this forward. And that leads us into this next part. Let me see if I can get us here of women in learning, we're going to do a workshop. And we're going to create solutions right now. I'll also ask you, take out your phone. I like to create real time. And reach out to uh, a woman that you're working with, that you know. Reach out, send some positive message to that person. Let's start with now and do that. And, and gentlemen, thank you as well, supporting it. And reach out maybe to other guys saying, have you supported the woman that you work with? your mother, your sister, whatever relatives. Do not something right this second as we set you up for this, this dialogue, this workshop. Good, I hear things. You can feel free to twi tweet and all that other stuff. But it, this is about the action of really impacting another human being and taking it to that personal level. So what we're going to do now is we're going to set you into groups right now. I'll pull up the topics that we have if your group is kind of searching what is it we want to talk about. Women leaders, could you stand once again that had attended yesterday's session? You're now a woman leader. If you didn't think you were, <laughs> you are. Um, if you're sitting next to each other, don't. Um, jump to a different table and be a part of guiding them on whatever the conversation that they may have, something brewing in your group, something that you talked about yesterday. And um, we're going to start practicing. We have roles here. There's the woman leader. And if you don't have one there, somebody in that table stand up and you're now a leader. Um, then take a moment to share your thoughts. So I'll put up the question, share the thought that you want to talk about. And we're going to keep time here because we want to do this all within six to 10 minutes. We're going to talk about something and talk about what to do about it. Not just complain and say things are terrible. List the item. One of the items, and I'll give a scenario, was um, and, and Kate, you thanked everyone for being here, which is awesome. We do want to thank you for being here. But in general, women over email and conversation thank for no reason. Hi, I just delivered you this report, and I'm going to meet you at 2 PM. Thanks, Sharon. No. It's been written up. It's been researched. You can say kindest regards, all the best, but don't say thanks. You, you are giving of your time, and you are worthy of that. Uh, be appreciative, as we just highlighted, but appreciate and be focused on that versus just doing it because it just feels comfortable. Someone else said the other word that we use typically and stereotypically is sorry. Sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you. Sorry, I didn't mean to take your time. But you're giving of your time. So that's just a scenario. And the, the solution was don't do it. Be conscious. Think it, and look at your words on your, on your emails and in your conversation. 
So with that, I'm going to let you go to it. Um, these are just some checklists that you want to have in your roles, and I'll go back to that. And then these, if you do not have a topic, you can have what can women do dynamically to design their careers, how to build confidence, looking at executive pathways, if you know of any. And just for a side note, think about who was the best woman in learning role model you could think of. And you may not have one, but if you can. And you may, if you do not have one, have a worse scenario. And that e works equally as well, because you know what you do not want to do. So put that in the back of your mind, and I'm going to let you guys just go to it. Obviously, there's more than four in <laughs> table, which is great. But women leaders, if you're not separated, just stand. And if there is no leader, um, can one lady just stand and, and help guide the conversation? Any questions? Did she have a question? Minutes.
All right. Okay, folks, you have four minutes. So if you can, if there's a trend that came out, someone write it in a big, bold letter. One or two words that summarizes. Four or five, we'll give five minutes. We have a big group back there. All right, folks, I, I love the dialogue. I want to be able to capture some of this. So, uh, and we're going to stay after the 120, but not to interfere with the next session. So, briefly, I'm going to go all the ways over here, and we're just all going to summarize right now. We're going to get our thoughts, and we're going to share what some of our highlights were from this in regard to one or two words. So folks, if I can ask everyone to just be a little quiet, I love it. Oh, by the way, they didn't think we'd be loud enough. We will make sure they hear women in learning by the end of this. Um, we had some ladies up against the wall here, and it, they're going to kill me. But we had a wonderful conversation about being in the field of sales and what that requires. And you brought up some really great points. If you can just share that. Um, so I, oh, thank you. I am a business development manager at a publication, um, and which sales is predominantly male orientated, as I'm sure most of you know. Um, but something I've noticed is that, hashtag not all men, but majority of men in sales don't have a need to learn um, and improve their sales skills, whereas it's something that I particularly like to do, and I'm currently doing a training course to help my sales skills and better myself. Thank you. So um, I was actually interviewing for a sales enablement role that I did not accept because they said, we don't have a lot of women salespeople because there's just none out there. There's none out there. Yeah, so that was the end. <laughs> um, what, 
if you can summarize, and this is going to be hard, so everyone think in one or two words, what was something that bubbled up in your dialogue here? I'm picking up the mic. Um, for us, we talked a lot about glossaries, vocabulary, and body language. So we're in situations where, for example, Carrie could say a point, Steve will repeat it just using slightly different language, and the moment passes, and it becomes Steve's idea, not Steve person. Oh, we He's talked really about this guy. yesterday. He's a really good guy. Um, but how do we say, that's a very interesting point you made, Carrie. I see Steve has built on it. Can we go back to the original point? Bravo. How do we do that? Bravo. So you just did. Mm -hmm. This is great. Um, that's what I'd love to hear, a solution that comes up with what the issue is. That is phenomenal. Um, one or two words. Let's see what we can do. <laughs> and, and yeah. yes. I got the default. Um, so it's funny, I also work in sales. Um, and I was just saying that I think what's interesting when we were just. Yes. I'm not loud enough. That's a first. Um, so I would say what we were talking about was that people were describing women that um, were leaders that they were inspired by um, in learning. And I thought what was really interesting. All really good examples, but we tend to all um, still capture around specific molds, right? Where women leaders are looked up to because they're caring <laughs> and empathetic. Yeah, true. Or they're successful because they're so good at their job and they can play with the boys. And I feel like as a culture, we cast women into one of these two silos. Mm -hmm. And it's when are we going to truly recognize values and diverse and stop hiring ourselves right. and hire for diverse styles. Right. I will add that Learning Pool hired me with the KPI that I would support women in learning. Oh. It's a new role and I'm very excited. And this t table is almost all Learning Pool and we have two filtered. A 30 under 30 learning woman here, Annalyn as well. So work and change the mold if you don't see it and you can't change it, we talked about this yesterday, go somewhere where it will be valued because that's, those are the companies that, and this is proven, that are making more money because they have women in leadership roles and they support it and they have women on boards. And that, it's a whole strategy, uh, there's a portfolio strategy, the SHE Index out of the US and I'm sure there's plenty in the European area as well. So anyone bubbling to talk and share what came up? I don't wanna leave anything out. Um, so, there we go. Um, we, we talked about um, a, a really good tip was uh, don't ask or don't wait to be asked for a promotion. Speak up, say that you're ready for it, say what you're looking for, be clear with your leadership as opposed to sitting back and waiting for a job to be, to be posted. Uh, we thought it was a really, a really impactful one. And very quick tip that I learned early in my career because it happened to me all the time. Somebody asks you to take notes, stand up at the flip chart and take them there. <laughs> <laughs> And um, you're very active online, and we've connected. Can you share your name so that we know who you are? Sorry, Laurie Niles Hoffman. <laughs> Woo! All right. Um, over here, any bubbling groups? I see right here, Sparkle. Let's go for it. Absolutely. That describes us perfectly. Um, so we were talking about, we talked about lots of things. We talked about uh, male and female role models. We talked about things like uh, caring and concern and, and being authentic, but like authentically good, not authentically being a prick. Um, and, and then one of the things at the end, which I'm sort of hijacking, sorry guys, was um, if somebody calls out a bad behavior or somebody calls out something that they see a, a power of injustice, mm -hmm. the importance that we then support the person who's called it out because otherwise you end up standing alone and isolated and you that so if you're not yeah yeah that's what we're saying like any th the advocacy required when we see it whether you be a man or a woman is 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 huge um so yeah speak up yeah speak up awesome awesome okay we're going to grow oh god okay now we've got <laughs> bubbling <laughs> we have a couple minutes so hello oh. Uh, we had a great example, sorry, from you, uh, from uh, about seven Trent Water, and the majority of the board and CEO are all women. Yay! Uh, the only the only challenge there that comes is when the CEO uh, goes to do lots of talking in front of a very masculine environment. They look at her 
and they would rather comment on how she looks rather than what she's saying. Um, now, we didn't really have a solution for that, but I've been, um, I've kind of been mentored before around all of that, and, the, and I work in sales, uh, in learning, um, and I think it's really important not to lose your femininity and who you are and kind of take on those masculine traits just so that you can kind of fit in um, and, and adopt that way of being. So Excellent. My recommendation is, oh, thank you very much. I appreciate that. Did you hear my latest report on? Every time you get that compliment, it's be appreciative. I mean, who doesn't want to be told something very nice? But reflect back then on what you want to be known for. It takes practice. Um, there was somebody yeah. here. Yes. And remember, just really quickly, guys, because I want to include okay. everybody. Um, I think our biggest soundbite from which everything forms is the word diversity has been hijacked. Uh, there is um, something about us, and, and you know, in some ways it's positive about putting us on boards and the women in everything groups, but uh, we don't, nobody wants to be a, a tick box on what you've done. And there's some really, really good ideas that came out of it. But this gentleman said here, a, a, a lot of the personal barriers don't always conform to stereotypes. So the things that we face by being the main looking after the kids or, or the, the being the primary educators for them are not gender specific. And um, it, it's somehow, when we look at diversity, when we look at inclusion, looking at it in the broader sense as well. Excellent, so broaden our thoughts. One thing I'm gonna do, it's gonna be incredibly uncomfortable, but we're gonna do it because it really matters for where we're headed. I'm gonna say hashtag, and I would like you with your loudest voice to say women in learning. So that one, one women in learning, they will hear us. I know this is for the UK, this is really uncomfortable. <laughs> but, but it was stated to me a couple of times that nobody will ever hear us. So I would like to make it loud and clear, and I apologize to those videotaping, but I'm gonna say hashtag, and I'm begging you to go out of your skin, do something uncomfortable, because that's what it's gonna take for us to move the needle. So, I know. One, two, three, hashtag women, women in learning. Okay. Peace. <laughs> I can say they should have heard us now. Um, we had a raised hand over here. Was there? Thank you. Yeah, um, I just wanted to give a tip. Uh, I, uh, my name is Silke and I work for IKEA and I live in Sweden. So I have the privilege to work in a company and live in a country where it's uh, basically very much about being uh, equal, um, yeah, rights equal. Um, uh, in the company, 50% management is women, also in the higher management, our digital manager is a woman. So uh, the movement is there. And uh, now on the occasion of um, International Women's Day on the 8th of March, um, our topic is actually really 50-50 and we are strongly working in that direction. And I would invite all of you to work on that and really use International Women's Day on yes. the 8th of March to organize something in your companies um, we have doing that the last years and uh, really to create awareness throughout all uh, departments because even though we have 50-50 in the overall perspective, in some departments it's still not the balance there and we are working on it. Fabulous. That's great. So, thank you. If, uh, if any of you would like, feel free to leave your business card up there. We are happy to either add you to the LinkedIn group or share some of the other resources that Kate and many other of the other women leaders, there's Celine too, hi. Um, we want to make sure that this continues and that the movement moves forward. To be considerate to the session here, we, we are wrapping up now. We will collect all of the poster boards and we will curate that and make sure that that gets back. But I would truly like to thank you all for your time because we did make a change today and we will move forward with this initiative. Thank you, Kate, for being the co-lead here. And thank you all, guys. <laughs>